Good morning. Not sure well how well you can hear me, but I'm sitting on my back deck today. It's a beautiful morning, and I thought, well, why not do the show today from my back deck? Rob here. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning, and I thought, why not enjoy some sunshine and read some of my material to you folks, and today we're going to do that. Okay, so I was going to continue with the book, uh, Check Your Panoply, which I'm going to do today. So let's get started. Uh, obedience to faith in our divine service. Saints, though blessed by, of God, continue to live in the world. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. They are not exempt from the ordinary relations and duties to other hu humans. In fact, their faith really makes all their living a divine service. Here we touch the aspect which is a is little appreciated for we have a distinct tendency to regard divine service as applying only to those engaging specifically in the labor of pastors teachers and evangelists Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 such a certainty render certain such are certainly rendering service to God and his saints yet it is it is special being a distinct gift from God 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. In the initial consideration, divine service consists in our obedience to the faith. It is our practical living of the evangel in regard to our fellow saints, to our enemies, to humans in general, and to the state. God is able where we have failed. It is, is it not our delight to understand that our God in Christ Jesus has removed every possibility of condemnation from us? He has made our salvation sure and secure yet he arranged to set right all the acts of his saints for those acts in our accounts which are proper in his sight we shall have the compensation of our allotment but what is the detrimental what is detrimental in our conduct that will be requited also second corinthians chapter 4 verse 10 and w and would we as his saints be have it otherwise Surely the evangel brings us to us the spirit which leads us to desire and intend that every thought, word, and deed be in subjecting, subjection to him as our Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. If we, have in, if we have in the slightest degree failed to achieve that which corresponds to the righteousness of new life, then we surely wish such failings rectified, even though it may bring us loss. And for even this, we shall thank him and rejoice that he is able where we have failed. Let us welcome the fact that God has made provision for any debits of our accounting to be discharged by his righteousness and ability. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Only thus may we be properly and confidently look forward to the applause of our great God and Savior in regard to our divine service. Meanwhile, make, may we make full use of his enabling grace. The realm of faith before Ephesians. When Paul in Ephesians 6.16 speaks of the large shield of faith, he uses a wonderful figure of speech, which indeed covers all various aspects of faith he has in mind. The apostles command to take up this large shield implies the necessity of exercising individual faith and of broadening the realm of faith in general. God is the one who provides both of them. We, however, are supposed to cooperate wholeheartedly in, in individual faith, obedience, or rather in recognition and realization of the various divine truths which make up the whole realm of faith, as we have shown earlier in this series. Your faith is flourishing. The largeness of our shield is intended to emphasize the fact that it is sufficient in size to offer ample protection against enemy attacks. At the same time, however, it is very, its very largeness is indicative of the wealth of the truce, of truce, of all the spiritual graces which Paul wants to share with us in his epistles. His attempt to readjust the deficiencies of the Thessalonians' realm of faith, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, is continued in his second letter to them, which brings out the distinction between the rage of man and the wrath of God. During the secret administration of grace, believers need have no fear of the terrible trial which will soon sweep over the earth. We have no fear of what's coming on the earth. 
the rest of the world will. Hence, Paul can praise the Lord for our salvation out of the coming indignation. Which, when he writes, Now we ought to be thanking God always concerning you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, seeing that God prefers you from the beginning for salvation, an individual holiness of the Spirit, and individual faith in the truth. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. The circumcision believers expected to experience the terrors of that day, when only those who endured to the consummation would be saved. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But when this, occur, when this occurs, we will have already left this earth to meet our Lord in the air, for he is our rescuer, rescuer out of the coming indignation. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. Okay, I'm going to stop there today. It's beautiful out here, so I wanted to give you this show today from the beautiful sunny uh, back deck. So with that, I will say grace and peace to all of you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and we will see you tomorrow.